This is an overview of an article entitled Genome-Wide Association Study Identifies a Novel Genetic Risk Factor for Recurrent Venous Thrombosis, published in the January 2018 issue of Circulation, Genomic, and Precision Medicine. Venous thrombosis is a major source of morbidity and mortality. On the order of 20% to 30% of patients who suffer a first episode of venous thrombosis have a recurrent episode of venous thrombosis within five years of the first episode. It's not clear what drives the risk of recurrent events, as well-established risk factors for first events do not necessarily predict which patients will develop recurrent events. With the rationale that there might be specific genetic risk factors that drive the risk of recurrence, the authors of the paper under discussion performed a genome-wide association study, or GWAS, in an attempt to identify such factors. In the GWAS design, one examines the DNA of many individuals with the disease, cases of recurrent venous thrombosis, and many unaffected individuals, controls without recurrent events. There are many common DNA variants, single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, throughout the human genome. Most SNPs have two alleles, a more common major allele and a less common minor allele. In a GWAS, the question is asked of each SNP in the genome, is there a difference in the relative frequency of the SNP alleles in the cases versus the controls? If there's a statistically significant difference, it suggests that the SNP is marking a region of the genome, a locus, containing some genetic factor that influences the disease process. Here's the study design of the GWAS for recurrent venous thrombosis. Almost 5,000 individuals in a study following patients after a first venous thrombosis event were potentially eligible for the GWAS. After the elimination of individuals for whom DNA samples were not available or who had a cancer diagnosis, cancer being a strong risk factor for venous thrombosis, and those excluded for other reasons, there were 447 with known recurrent venous thrombosis and another 832 without recurrent events who were randomly chosen as the control group. In the end, the GWAS included 1,279 individuals total. Here are the results of the GWAS. In this graph, the x-axis is the position in the genome split into 23 chromosomes, and the y-axis is the strength of association. The red line indicates a stringent threshold for statistical significance, taking into account the millions of SNPs tested in the GWAS. The blue line indicates a less stringent threshold that the authors considered to be suggestive, but not definitive, statistical evidence. Only one set of SNPs in a single locus, visible here as a peak above chromosome 1, surpassed the red line. Very interestingly, the locus harbors the F5 gene, which encodes factor 5, well known to play a role in thrombosis. SNPs in 17 other loci surpass the blue line, but not the red line. In this zoomed-in plot, the x-axis is the position in the F5 locus, and the y-axis is the strength of association. There are a number of SNPs in the locus that have strong evidence of association with recurrent venous thrombosis. However, these SNPs are strongly linked to each other, so it's not clear how many of these represent independent signals, rather than all of them reflecting one signal. The factor V Leiden variant, a coding variant in the F5 gene that's also known as RS6025, is a very well-established risk factor for venous thrombosis. So it's not surprising that SNPs in the F5 locus turned out to be associated with recurrent events. This plot shows what happens 
when the SNPs are adjusted for the presence of the factor V Leiden variant. All of the SNPs seen on the previous graph are no longer strongly associated. This suggests that the factor V Leiden variant accounts for all of the associations of SNPs in the locus with recurrent venous thrombosis. In other words, all of those SNPs were strongly linked with the factor V Leiden variant rather than being risk factors themselves. This is not too surprising given what we know about the factor V Leiden variant. In this study, the factor V Leiden variant confers a 2.4 fold increase in risk of recurrent venous thrombosis. Recall that there were 17 loci with suggestive rather than definitive evidence for association with recurrent events. In order to assess whether any of these might be true positive signals, the authors genotyped SNPs in the 17 loci in a replication cohort made up of individuals in three independent studies, together 350 cases and 1,866 controls. Only one SNP in one locus showed evidence of a replicated association. The SNP, RS994-6608, is in a locus on chromosome 18q22.1. It's located in an intergenic region far away from any protein coding genes, the nearest being TMX3, which is known to be expressed in platelets, but doesn't have a clear function in those cells. Of note, each copy of the minor allele of the SNP confers a 2.2-fold increase in risk of recurrent venous thrombosis, almost as strong a risk factor as factor V Leiden. In conclusion, this study confirmed that the factor V Leiden variant is a genetic risk factor for recurrent venous thrombosis. It also found a novel risk factor on chromosome 18 that appears to be almost as strong as factor V Leiden. How this new genetic risk factor might operate is entirely unknown and will require follow-up studies. Validating this risk factor and determining the mechanism may ultimately prove actionable, whether for a risk prediction or possibly even the development of a new therapeutic strategy to prevent recurrent venous thrombosis. Mm -hmm.